All right, welcome in to a special edition of the Flagship Podcast. I am Chip Brown of Horns247.com, along with my esteemed colleague, Eric Henry of Horns247.com, and we are joined, I always say, by former Texas Longhorns assistant coach, now championship head coach of the UTSA Roadrunners. He told y'all he was going to get that program going, all he's done is average double-digit wins with conference titles. Heck, Coach, welcome in, and what's next? You taking UTSA to the to the Power Four? You know, uh, we did have a big announcement today. President Amy got the merger with UT Health. That's, that's big for our university. And uh, with the opportunity to get uh, in the team playoff race now, that's pretty exciting for teams. Uh, we've got to be perfect because there's, there's going to be – only one of us get invited. So, uh, it's a lot of pressure, and uh, I know I play the horns, and that's going to be a tough task. So Steve's done a fantastic job there. Well, let's talk about the job that you've done because, you know, some of us knew you were going to be a, a dynamite head coach, and heck, some are probably wondering why you're still at UTSA and maybe haven't taken a, a bigger job, but you've You've said it's going to have to be a perfect situation for you. I mean, talk about the success that you've built and what that, you know, obviously it comes with attention. Yeah, well, I work for a good woman. My daughter is a good lady. She's been very supportive of me. She, we, we, we're doing all we can here. We don't have the goods that you guys have. And the game has changed for me, to be very honest with you, from some of these jobs I didn't take through the years. Uh, the game's changed. It's uh, it's who would have ever dreamed five years ago when I got this job where college football is right now. Uh, but we've got to adapt. We've got to provide. We got to keep fundraising. We got to keep getting IL money. Same same battles everybody is fighting. When you're a starter program, you can imagine the pressure comes from trying to just raise money. To be quite frankly, Chip and uh, I become a full time fundraiser, uh, full time recruiter, and a full time football coach and. That's three full-time jobs. Uh, that's, that's a lot of work, but it's been a blast. Yeah, I mean, you've got the personality for it. I mean, it that personality comes through in recruiting. It comes through in fundraising. How how would you rate your progress as a program? Where you know how far have you come, and where do you need to go? Well, if if you just compared it, where how far we've come, I'd say it's astronomical. We've only been playing thirteen years. You know, we built this new forty-five million dollar facility. Uh, it's an amazing place, uh, but just the problem is the game is just so fastly changing. If the game would have stayed normal, we'd have been really cooking in some good grease right now. But the game's just expedient so fast, uh, it's really hard for us to keep up. Uh, but the kids have been amazing. We've won a ton of ball games. Uh, we are getting better all the time in those aspects. Our boosters have stepped up. We've had some humble gifts. Um, and You'd have to give us an A on what we've done. But when you compare us to the other schools, we're just still behind because we're just so new, Chip. Our, our, our alumni barbecue, and my oldest football player that shows up is 35 years old. I mean, 10 years, you know, they're 22 when they graduated. It's not, it's not the same as when you have an alumni barbecue in Texas or, or A&M or Baylor. Go ahead, Eric. Jeff, just kind of want to go back to something you mentioned earlier. So I, before coming out to cover Texas, I, I covered Conference USA for six years. So pretty familiar with your program and, and kind of the ascent of, uh, of the Roadrunners program. Want to ask you, how crucial has that relationship been with Lisa Campos, kind of having the alignment, head coach, AD, uh, I'm sure school president as well, just all being a lockstep in terms of what you guys envision for the football program and, and the direction it's gone? Yeah, it's everything. I mean, she uh... – She's always seen me for who I truly am. This is the first time I've ever heard her put pressure on me. Uh, the 12-team the playoff, actually somebody, she's never mentioned wanting to me in my entire time here. But somebody sent me a podcast she did, and uh, she is expecting to make the playoffs. And I'm like, Dr. Campos, what, what, where'd my girl go? What happened to the girl that was just about culture? And uh, she's like, well, you've been doing that. I don't even make these playoffs. I'm like, that means we've got to be perfect. We've got to be perfect. So she's, she's really, awesome. uh, she's about the right stuff. 
And uh, I couldn't have worked for a better person when it comes to when the game is changing like it is, the unbelievable amount of pressure that everybody's under right now. Um, she's just about the right stuff. She's about the student athlete. That's where her background is. Uh, she came from student services. And uh, she's about the kids. And um, we, we've been a blessing. It's, it's crazy we've been together five years. It's gone by extremely fast. And um, I'll tell you this quick story. This is hilarious. And very few people know this. I'm embarrassed to tell y'all, uh, but I think you'll, I think you'll cut me some slack uh, being I'm from East Texas and, you know, high school guy in the interview, uh, president Amy asked me about my relationships with the provo uh, at university of Texas and SMU in Arkansas. And uh, I have no clue what the heck provost is at that time of my life. You know, I'm like, what the heck is this? And I, I couldn't say it. Right? The president of the university is speaking to you. And uh, Dr. Compost threw me. A, I knew I was her. I knew I was her guy when she threw me the lifeline. She's like Jeff, Charlie, and Chad both have told me, and Hunter Check has told me how active you were with academics, how you worked with campus, and it was just enough of a hint that I could take it and run and answer the question. So I, I think she's been for me for a long time, and uh, I need her to keep taking care of me. And, and on that aspect, Eric, she was wonderful in those situations, like her ability to work campus and her ability to walk in meetings uh, everybody knows she's about the right stuff jeff i got two more for you and i'll pass it back to chip um also want to piggyback off something you mentioned in terms of just the changing landscape of, of college football and again you know having covered the group of fives just how challenging it is to retain players you know i was having a conversation with uh, tyson helton the other day and he talked about embracing the challenge of reshaping his roster every year, kind of enjoying that challenge. This is a two part question. One, just you, like you said, you know, how challenging is it to kind of have to flip that roster, you know, seemingly at the rate you are? And second, do you embrace that challenge of, OK, we, we know inevitably we're going to lose a player here or there, but, you know, this can be an opportunity to maybe, you know, use the portal as kind of like an NFL free agency type deal, more or less. Good for Ty. I'm glad he's got such an amazing and positive attitude. No, I don't embrace it. It's a bunch of crud. Uh, let's keep it real. I mean, who wants to take a, a wonderful player out of Smithson Valley and my man, Dre Moore, and have an unbelievable career? And I love him, and I'm I'm so happy for his success. And now i got to figure out how to block him when I come to Texas. I mean, no, I don't embrace that. I don't – and I'm glad Ty's at it the correct way that all you guys want to hear, but no, I don't embrace it. Uh, we haven't lost with three. Um, that's been uh, – but I all, almost feel guilty, Eric. I almost feel guilty. I have a defensive tackle named Joe Evans that turned down $675,000 this year. I told him he's got to get out of here. I mean, take the money and get out of here. Uh, I've got numerous five-year players now, Eric. Oscar Cardenas, Maul Ligon, Joe Evans, Brandon Brown, Donye Taylor that can play anywhere in the country. And those guys turn down six digit offers to stay here and make thirty five or forty thousand dollars. I feel guilty. Like I feel like I'm doing right by those kids. Uh and, and I tell them, I mean, if they need the money that they need to go. Uh, but they've all stayed except for three. Uh we've lost three players. And uh, but no, I don't embrace it whatsoever. That's a fuck of bull, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> the last one for you, I'll pass it back to, to Chip. Um, just want to ask you about a couple, you know, current guys on your roster, you know, getting a couple guys back in JT Clark and Makai Hart, two guys, you know, banged up with, with injuries. And also you talk about being able to replace Trey Moore. Uh, Jamori Robinson is a kid who had a nice year for you as far as making his plays behind the line of scrimmage. Just talk about, you know, kind of those three guys and the impact of getting them uh, as you head to Texas week four or week three, I should say. Well, I was having a little fun with Ty's comment. I, I have a ton of respect for Ty and what he's done in Western Kentucky. But to your point, that's where you embrace it. Like Jamori gets to take a chance now to get his, you know, this is his time to shine with Trey getting out of the way for him. That's going to get Jamori a lot more opportunities to make plays. It's going to allow, you know, James Wally, another freshman we developed. Uh, it's going to allow Vic Shaw, uh, another freshman we developed, uh, to get their chance to shine, right? That's where the embracing comes in. As far as JT and Mikai goes, those, those two incredibly – it's crushing events we've ever had here. I mean, you're talking about a third-round drag and, and JT that his knee just hadn't gotten right. And I, I don't know if and when that's ever going to happen again, but he's working his tail off. Uh, he's not been able to practice yet. He's still rehabbing that thing. Makai has tried his dogs to go. He's done everything in his power to go. You're talking about a two-time all-conference player that's played two games in the last two years. 
Uh, he got he tore his ACL the first game against Houston two years ago, and the second game last year against ACA he tears the other one against Texas State. And when you lose your and for us to understand our quarterback was left handed. So when you lose your right tackle, you're, you're losing your left tackle the way y'all see it. And that those have been tough losses for us. And um, I hope they're back. I know this, Eric, if, if JT Clark and Makai Hart are out there, Jeff Trailer is a heck of a lot better football coach for some reason. Jeff, the uh, are, you're finally going to have a quarterback not named Frank Harris. Is that what you're telling us? He's really gone. Uh, I mean, he's like Jason on Friday the 13th. He just keeps coming back. If I could have found another way to get eligibility, I would have done it. We, we got all that we could out of him, Jim. <laughs> well, tell us about Owen McCown and what's going on at the quarterback situation now. Yeah, Owen and Eddie are two good ones. We can both win with them. We have one with both of them. Uh, they're good high, they were good high school quarterbacks. They're good college quarterbacks. I just hope everybody grades them on the same curve they graded Frank on. You know, we only won seven games that first year with Frank. It took him a while to learn the offense and get it down. I don't, I don't want everybody to grade uh, Owen and Eddie on the same curve they graded Frank on in the end. That's not fair. So I hope everybody gives those guys a little bit of slack early in their careers. Uh, but they're both really – Well, Kendrick Blackshire is a player who transferred from Texas to UTSA. Uh, what are you seeing from Kendrick Blackshire? Uh, he's got a beautiful smile. He loves to practice every day. Uh, it's been a, a, another, back to Eric's point, I know I'm having a blast with Ty's comment there. That's where you embrace it, right? Kids get this, his, his chance to come in here and, 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 and play. And a uh, beautiful smile, great locker room guy. He's been a blast. Uh, we've got to get him, you know, to the right playing weight. Uh, he's getting close to this Texas sun. is taking it off of him quickly. Uh, I, I think he'll be a great addition for our football team. And talk about the, you know, how you're preparing this team, the mindset of the program. Your culture has been so strong, the two one Oh culture. Um, you know, talk about what this team, what you like about it and, and where you think they can go. Uh, I feel good about where we are in the trenches. Uh, I've, I've got a lot of veteran guys that stayed with me. Uh, you know, I've got Ronald Triplett now, fifth year. Uh, you know, Osiris Simon from Atascacita, fifth year. Joe Evans, uh, fifth year player. Brandon Brown, fifth year player. Donye Taylor, fifth year player. Jamal Liggins, my Mike linebacker, started every game, fifth year player. Um, we did lose our corners. Uh, one of those three kids we lost, uh, you know, was a really good corner, and the other one graduated, uh, and the two backups. Uh, graduated. So, but we crushed it uh, in the portal, uh, getting Denver Harris, who I knew from, you know, North Shore, uh, getting Zach Morris, who had a great career at New Mexico. Um, Zay Frazier is the kid we have at junior college that we've been developing here. It's going to have a really big year for us. And uh, there's a fourth one I feel really good about. And my, who, who the, oh yeah, Cyrus Stitch Dumas, uh, another really good football player. We're, we're, we're really good at corner. And we didn't know we were going to be, uh, but we know we are now. So that's got me excited. Two veteran safeties, uh, Ken Robinson, I've been here five years. And then Elliot Davis, who my brother coached in high school, who had a great career at UIW. And he started for us last year, and he'll have another great year this year. So we're we're really excited uh, about our defense. Offensive line-wise, Chip, we've, we lost some really good players. Uh, we got a center out of the portal, a left tackle, and a right tackle. Uh, Big J out of Port Natchez Groves. He actually played at Texas in the very beginning. And then he went to Houston. And now we got Jay. Uh, and then our left tackle uh, got out of Rutgers. Uh, we feel really good about those kids. And uh, I've got two all-conference guys returning on the inside in Bentley and Corey. So, uh, and I got Oscar Cardenas back, fifth year. Uh, so that guy has been a great player for us. Uh, my running backs are deep. We've got seven running backs. And, uh, they're all really good football players and our receiver core. We're, we're smaller than we have been chip, but we're extremely, extremely fast. Uh, we will be able to throw the ball downfield better. Than we have since we've been here. I mean, it sounds like a team you like. I like all my teams, chip. You got, what am I going to do? I mean, I'm not going to trade them in. They're my guys. We got to roll, baby. Got to roll. Got to roll. All right. Let me ask you um, the last time you went up to Texas, Double pass, onside kick, 
that was a that was a one possession game deep into the third quarter. Nice green play. I wish I had it back. That overthrow and that tilt was a killer chip. Y'all's depth was just so much better than ours. That you now y'all taking a great turn though. That, that y'all's roster is just way different than what we played. You know, uh, two years ago. Um, I am very concerned about just how, how massive y'all are on y'all's O-line and y'all's D-line. Your skill kids are just – y'all have identified the right players and y'all have gotten them. Quinn's so dang good. I know this is a culture pillar violation, but y'all have been good to me for years, so I'm going to talk about the horns with you guys on y'all station. Uh, I, I don't know if we can match up like we did then. You know, we ran the ball well that night. I just don't know. Y'all y'all are different now. Y'all Y'all look way different than you did back then. Go ahead, Eric. Jeff, you, you mentioned him in passing, but was also going to come back and ask about Oscar Cardenas. As you said, a guy's, you know, been there five years in the program. Just talk about kind of his importance. I know he's a guy who's gotten one of those cherished, you know, single digit numbers for you there at, uh, at UTSA. He's in the zero. He's taking Frank's number, and that's pretty big. And uh, Jamal Ligon out of, out of Tyler took the zero from Rashad Wisdom. But those are two great players we lost. We're going to miss those guys. But Oscar's one of those guys, Eric. His dad's at every practice, high school coach, uncles at every practice coaches he's never walked in here and asked for a dime uh we pay him as much as we can here in utsa which is not very much another guy that could have easily left for six digits and he loves san antonio very soft hands he played about he gonna tell y'all he played at 285 last year i think he played at 295 uh and the nfl wanted to make him a center or a guard and he got down to 265 again he wants to play tight end in the national football league so it's gonna be very interesting he's lost none of his power Still has the salt hands, running a lot better. Uh, I wouldn't bet against that kid. Uh, I wouldn't. He's an amazing human, a really good tight end. He's made some of the most historic catches here uh, you've ever seen. And one other thing, I should have mentioned this in, in talking about your relationship with Lisa Compost, but uh, how much is, is that that race facility that you guys are able to put together and get built? Uh, what has that meant to the program to you know be able to have that in place? You know, it just people are shocked when they come here how nice it really is. Uh, right outside my window, my office, I oversee both our practice facilities. Uh, we haven't gotten the indoor completed yet. I mean, it, it happened right during COVID. It was only $5 million back then to get it done. And now it's like $12 million to get it done. And Would you rather put $12 million into a building or try to pay your kids? I mean, that's the new way of college football. So she's got some big decisions to make. And, uh, as, and she includes me in all those things. I would say we have an unbelievable partnership. She, she really listens to me. I listen to her. I get it. She can't give me everything, uh, but she really does try. And when she tells me she can't, she can't. And we just do the best we can. She's she's a good girl. But did you turn did you turn down the Houston job? Chip, I I I had a great conversation with those guys. Uh, I mean, w Willie is an amazing coach, and uh, they hired a great guy there. All right, because I'm always like. Trailer's going to kill it wherever he goes. So, and I'm not trying to start anything. You know, I, I'm, I'm a believer of, of your abilities. So, um, you know, I just heard some things. So I wanted, I wanted to ask you directly, what about, you know, when, how did the conversation go with, with Trey Moore? Cause he's a guy who is the all conference defensive player of the year. How does he, does he come to you? Does he, how, how does that work? Yeah. I mean, he's, He's awesome. He was at our game. You know, we our soccer team played Sunday night. He was here, and uh, he's still loved. Uh, we, we still communicate. And no tampering. Don't worry about that. Uh, I just I've known the kid forever. Uh, he's at the right place. He's happy. Uh, he, he likes Sark. He likes being there. Uh, he's just one of our own kids. You know, he's a, he's a San Antonio kid right out of Smithson Valley. Played for a dear friend of mine, Larry Hill. It's tough on these kids right now. The adults are the ones that mess it up. It ain't the kids. We, we messed it up. We, we should have been playing these jokers a long time ago. And then we would have had a better plan in place. We had a better system in place. This thing is going to be fine once we get it all worked out. No one is against the kids getting paid. I, I, I mean, I say no one. There's probably some people out there that don't understand what the deal is. But no one that's, in, that's involved in the game understands it, thinks the players should not be getting paid. It's just we got to get some protection. Uh, that's why the NFL has their system in place. Uh, because you lose certain players in the same position, you have no chance, and you don't. Then it's too late in the game, and you can't go get it right. Uh, so uh, I hope we can get that figured out. But I'm excited for Troy. He wanted to take the chance. Uh, he wanted to see it, and 
I just wish I'd have to play him. You know, that, that's going to be very awkward for all of us because, you know, he was in a single digit for us. You know, he was a, he was a one for us. I mean, so that means he got top three votes and, um, it is what it is. I, you gotta, you gotta embrace it, Eric. You gotta embrace it. <laughs> what, what makes him stand out? Like what, what makes him a, a guy who can get 14 and a half sacks in a year? Yeah. You gotta remember he's a, he's a red shirt for us. He didn't play for us four games that first year. And uh, he just works all the time. He's a tireless worker. He, I can't tell you how many hours I looked out that window and seen him out there by himself on the blocking dummy working on all of his spin moves, all of his hand moves, his dip. I mean, he just added a new move each offseason. He'd add another move, and he'd stay out there and work it hour after hour after hour. And uh, that's just who he is. That's, you know, he came from a great program in Larry Hill and Smithson Valley. It's all those kids know out there. And, uh, you know, there, there are a few programs in the state like that. When you just get a kid from Gilmer, Texas, or, or North Shore, or Smithson Valley, they're going to play a certain way. Go ahead, Eric. Jeff, I, I want to ask you, when you make the transition from Conference USA to, to the American, you just, you know, obviously you had great success in Conference USA and then the American stepping up and it was, you know, a, a swath of teams who all made that move from CUSA. Just talk about where you feel as a program you're at kind of now. What's this year, year three, I believe, going to uh, into the American? Yeah, you're not going to like my answer. I, I didn't want to do it. Uh, I didn't think we were ready. Uh, I think we could have stayed right there and, and been Liberty last year. Uh, we're, we're just, it's just moving too fast. And you get in that league with Memphis and South Florida and SMU's already gone. When you're talking about some guys now, you're, you're, you're Tulane. <laughs> These guys have been cooking some grease for a long time. And uh, I didn't want to do it. Now, we rolled off and had a heck of a year. I agree. We won eight out of our last nine games, 7-0 and going into Tulane. And turned it over five times. Had more yards, had more first down, time of possession, all them stats that don't matter when you don't freaking win the ball game because we turned it over too many dead gum times. So I know like on the field it looks like we belong there. I'm just it's just so heavy right now on the NIL. You're trying to keep up with budgets, coaches pay, analysts, recruiting coordinators. <laughs> you know, and I know I sound like I'm whining there, but we were just I wish we could have stayed in USA about three to five more years before we took the jump. Uh, but our president knows what's up. I mean, I didn't know we were fixing to be this, whatever we are now, this unbelievable uh, we, $1.1 billion endowment and all these kids on, I mean, 40,000 students and all this stuff that he's doing as of today. So he knows way more than what I know. And I'm not privy to that information. But little old Jeff Treader's vote, I, I didn't want to leave. I liked it where we were. Uh, I'll sneak one more quick one uh, more in here. Uh, Jeff, I covered a game at the, the Alamo Dome. It was 2018. So it was the year before you got there. Uh, FIU, the school I was covering, you know, went to, to USC, UTSA. And just what you've been able to do with that fan base as far as just energizing the folks in San right. Antonio, getting them out, it's been impressive night and day. A, could you talk about that? B, what are you expecting? What are you expecting as far as a, a road order contingency coming to DKR in week three? Oh, well, heck, y'all stick us so far up, it doesn't matter where we are. I mean, my wife can't even tell where I am down there. Y'all got her in the freaking top of the building, man. Uh, who would know if we're even there? Well, y'all have done an amazing place with that, man. Uh, I mean, Chris has just done. That is, when we pulled up, it looked like the Texas State Fair outside, y'all. It was rocking, man. And then you go inside, it's better than a Journey concert. The music's just rocking. It's, 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 y'all have done a fantastic job. Uh, it helped me. Uh, paint a picture of when I got back here, some things we could do. And we've tried our best to uh, to mimic that and in increase our fan participation, our fan day experience. Uh, but our fans on a Saturday, uh, we're, we're rocking in here. Now, Friday nights hurt us. Uh, you know, our fans are very loyal uh, to the, the city high school teams, and they should be. Uh, I hate playing Friday night games. One, it's not good for Texas high school football in this state, and it's not good for our fans. Uh, so we're, it's a lot easier to play us on a Friday night. Now, I will say 25,000 UTSA fans in the Alamo Dome on a Friday night still sounds like 50,000 in most places. Uh, but on a Saturday with a good opponent, we'll have 35 to 45,000, and it's going to sound like 100,000 people. They're, they're incredible. It's the people that makes this place so special, Eric. Sure. Um, I, I compare it to how they've been with the Spurs. They're loyal. 
they're humble, they're gracious. They really appreciate the city's team. And I'm not there saying we're in the Spurs level, but I would say we're moved towards that feeling. Uh, and that's the way we're treated here. And we're very grateful for how our fans see us and treat us. Well, how's your, how's your son? How's, how's my man, Jordan? You're six. Uh, you know, he's coaching the quarterbacks with coach Kubiak. Uh, Clint's been fantastic to him. Uh, now he's having a son in November and, you know, I thought, Maybe his pops might get some naming rights on the child, but no, it's first name Mickey. Uh, I'm sure it has something to do with Mickey Loomis, his general manager, and and his brother made the middle name of Jacob. So uh, dad didn't make the cut. So I'm really excited for Jordan and Sierra. They've been married now a couple of years. It's crazy that I have a 31 year old son. And uh, I become a huge Saints fan, obviously, uh, which is tough when you grow up a diehard Cowboy fan. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm big who that guy right now, Chip. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, we appreciate the conversation. We love catching up with, with Jeff trailer, uh, continued success. And obviously we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you in, uh, in September in Austin and appreciate the time, Jeff. Till sorry. Take it easy on me now. I don't, I don't, don't embarrass me when I come to town, man. Appreciate you guys. Hey, for Jeff Trailer, for Eric Henry, I am Chip Brown. Thanks so much for listening to this edition of the Flagship Podcast. Till next time.